I wanted to talk to you about story and magic and stuff. I think it's the same thing. I think oftentimes story and magic are the same thing. And um, give you a little bit of history of what we've been doing at SNAP, where SNAP came from. Um, so it's true this, the, that the, the, everything that I told you, the opening stuff is true. I did grow up in this, in this organization. <laughs> and um, it was, um, let me put it this way. So I, I spent my time, so I, I really was, spent a long time running away from that. And a few years ago, I heard about this contest. And this contest was for a new radio host or whatever. And I thought I'd enter it. I ended up being one of three finalists in this contest, which was cool. And I worked, and I worked, and I worked, me and my buddy Mark, to put together a radio show. I don't know anything about radio. The, I had no clue what audio science was or anything like that. But we worked hard for a week on this contest, and, and um, no sleep, no nothing, and we put together this show. And I was proud, right? I did this thing, and I was proud of it. And we sent it away um, to the contest organizers, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, NPR, and a bunch of other folks, and I finally went to sleep. And the next morning, I got a phone call from one of the contest organizers, and he said, you have embarrassed me. <laughs> You've embarrassed the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. You've embarrassed NPR. And you've embarrassed yourself. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Welcome to public media. <laughs> I was in a fetal position. Um, we had worked really, really hard on this. And I didn't understand what the problem was. And in an act of amazing professional generosity, um, a local woman, an actual professional, late radio professional, her name is Holly Kernan, she listened to our little hour of tape. And she said, you know what? You are nobody's radio producer. I knew that. <laughs> but you're a pretty okay storyteller. And she gave me some tweaks to fix the radio thing part of it. And we sent it back in after spending Christmas kind of rebuilding it. And uh, six months later, they asked us to pitch a show. And to make a very, very, very long story short, we did. And like, so I got to think about, what kind of show did I really want to make? And I had this idea, you know? I wanted to have some stage elements. I wanted it to be hot, sexy. I thought it was going to be cool. We're going to bring the funk to public radio. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. It's going to be awesome. And, um, and I started talking about this show that I wanted to do. And I went to LA, and I was talking to a program director there. And he said, you gonna have a stage show? I was like, of course I'm gonna have a stage show. And he said, well, I know a place where, that you might actually like. Uh-huh. He said, it's just building, it's very, very beautiful. It was abandoned a while ago by some old cult. They have this beautiful hall that's there, and it's called Ambassador Auditorium. And in this meeting, I literally started shaking. Um, people have their Jerusalem, their Mecca, their whatever. Ours was Pasadena, California, where we had erected this edifice to Herbert W. Armstrong. <laughs> now, even though Herbie's gone, that edifice is still there. It's a big, beautiful, I just saw it a while ago, Yo-Yo Ma was playing. <laughs> um, but I thought, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't go on that stage and tell these stories. When we went to, uh, to actually make this show, I found that this Blank computer screen stayed blank because um, 
I couldn't tell these stories. These, um, <laughs> these stories of being afraid, of being locked in closets, of thinking that demons are coming outside waiting to take me away and steal my soul forever. This idea of being locked in a very real battle against darkness, the terrors, the nightmares, the sadness of thinking that you all are all gonna burn up and I may, may make it out if I'm lucky. That was where my, my head was when I couldn't tell those stories because they didn't sound right. And it was only after a, a little while into this process that I realized if I don't start telling the stories that matter to me, then I might, not, well, might well as not have a microphone. And so then I kind of did start telling them. And the letters and the phone calls it turns out there's a bunch of us out there. <laughs> Culties. <laughs> different types, different names. Some of them had names the size Herbert W. But man, there were so, so many of my people. And it turned, instead of, um, of uh, embarrassing me or, or putting this mark on, I felt freeing. And I just want to thank a lot of you in the room for that. I had no idea that, you know, that going through that process was going to um, free me in a lot of different ways. And I'm here today to talk about storytelling and talk about magic making. But one of the, one of the very big things, if you don't remember anything else that I want to say, I don't, there's probably some psychiatrists, some psychologists in this, in this room. Um, this is New York. <laughs> but the idea of narratively being able to take little Glenn, um, <laughs> who was a complete mess, and being able to, instead of stop that story in trauma, to be able to look back and put him narratively wherever I wanted him to be. It's been the greatest gift ever. And I think that oftentimes, I think that um, we all get frozen in whatever our trauma might be. And knowing that we have the power to tell ourselves our own story, that you tell you your story, that your Herbert W. doesn't tell your story for you, is awesome. And the other thing, I'm going to say, okay, two things I want you to remember. <laughs> Here in public media, actually any media, there's this thing. We are all meaning machines. If I tell you a story about my mother, you're going to think about yours. And if I then tell you what that story means, I've just robbed you of it. I've stopped your thought about it. Um, I, the, 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 the magic, the real magic, we call it minding the gap, is that little bit at the end of the story where it, co it comes from the person telling it, and now it's yours in a different way. If I tell you what that story means, that never happens. It's that little bit of, that, that magic pixie dust doesn't get there. 